Though the world has ground to a halt over the past year, the entertainment industry has forged ahead, greenlighting new and exciting productions. Hell, this past month alone saw a bunch of extremely appealing movie and TV productions confirmed for the future, so it only made sense to do a rundown of the most exciting ones. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 11 most exciting new movies and TV shows just announced in March 2021. Number 11, Knives Out 2 and 3. Now, you might be wondering why this list is an 11 and why I'm suddenly wearing different clothes and that's because in between recording this list initially and it being edited it was announced that Ryan Johnson is going to make Knives Out 2 and 3 and we simply couldn't leave it off. Seriously Hollywood just has no respect for the art of list video creation so apologies for the continuity error. Anyway it is true as Ryan Johnson who will show up later on this list as well has just inked a deal to bring Knives Out 2 and 3 to our screens. According to Deadline, there was a major bidding war going on in secret between the big streamers, but it was Netflix who eventually won out after they splashed $450 million to secure the two movies for their platform. At the moment, we don't know too much more than that, and the only confirmed returning talent at the moment are Johnson himself and Daniel Craig as mystery sleuth Benoit Blanc, who of course was the standout star in that first movie. However, it's safe to assume that these two movies won't be following one continuous story story, but rather would see Blank moving from case to case, hopefully encountering a new all-star ensemble cast with each movie. The first starts shooting in July of this year, so expect to hear more on casting and stuff like that very very soon. Number 10, Zatanna. There have been numerous announced attempts to bring DC superhero Zatanna to the big screen over the past 15 years. There were even rumours that the character would appear in James Gunn's upcoming The Suicide Squad, but those have since been rubbished. All is not lost though, as it was recently confirmed that a new Zatanna movie is in the works. Currently attached is promising young woman writer-director Emerald Fennell, who is penning the script and is rumoured to also be directing. It's clear to see how Fennell's sensibilities could lend themselves well to the this hero, whose magical abilities, namely speaking incantations backwards to manifest her desires, are innately cinematic. There's no word on casting or anything like that yet, and the project is very much in the early stages of development, but still it is a promising, no pun intended, step forward for both Fennel and DC movies in general. Number 9, A Time for Mercy. Of the many, many legal dramas produced through the 1990s, it's undeniable that Joel Schumacher's A Time to Kill is one of the more memorable and more successful successful ones from that period. But some 25 years after the fact, I don't think anyone expected this film to get the serialized sequel treatment. That took me about 10 ticks to get right by the way, especially not with the original cast returning. Rather than just lazily reboot A Time to Kill for a brand new generation, this, like I said, is actually going to act as something of a sequel, with original actor Matthew McConaughey back in the role of Jake Briggins. This will take the form of a HBO miniseries and will be adapted from John Grisham's sequel novel, A Time Time for Mercy. A Time for Mercy sees McConaughey's character defending a young boy who killed his mother's boyfriend after claiming he was abusive towards her, a matter complicated by the fact that the dead boyfriend is a deputy sheriff. Considering that star-studded serialized TV has become stratospherically popular in the age of streamers, it does make sense for this sequel to be hitting the small screen rather than being optioned for a cinematic effort. It makes all the sense in the world in a car wait for it. Number 8. Steven Spielberg's autobiographical drama. Not one to sit still for very long, Steven Spielberg is already prepping his next film project for after West Side Story. Far away from the big budget blockbusters and high concept genre pictures that we're used to getting from this director, this new film will actually be a semi-autobiographical tale based on his own experiences growing up in Arizona. Michelle Williams has already signed on to play a character inspired by Spielberg's mother, and Seth Rogen has already been cast as a proxy to one of Spielberg's uncles. The casting process for the younger actors has been incredibly secretive so far though. We have no idea who will actually be playing a young Spielberg himself. For the first time in 20 years as well, this film is going to be notable because Spielberg will actually be co-writing it with a writing partner. That writing partner is Tony Kushner, who also penned Spielberg efforts Munich and Lincoln and bagged himself a few Oscar noms in the process. Shooting is expected to begin in the summer for a 2022 release date, but more importantly, I want you guys to tell me down in the comments below who you think would make a great young Spielberg in this movie because I've been racking my brains and I can't think of an actor who could fit that role but maybe you guys have a better idea than me. Number seven, 
poker face. Ryan Johnson may be hot off the success of his murder mystery Smash Knives Out, but for many, his finest work will actually be the three episode stint he did on Breaking Bad, specifically the outstanding episode of TV that was Ozymandias. And so it's exciting to see Johnson back in the realm of TV for his next project, Poker Face, which will be a 10 episode mystery drama series starring Russian Dolls Natasha Leon. Much like Knives Out, little is actually known about the specifics of the plot as Ryan Johnson has been keeping those very close to his chest, but he did have this to say in the announcement quote. I'm very excited to dig into the type of fun, character-driven, case of the week mystery goodness that I grew up watching. It's my happy place, end quote. Johnson did previously also hint that Columbo would be a huge influence on the series, so I know Ewan Patterson somewhere is going to be very happy about that, so you can expect the kind of wit, mystery, and intrigue that has defined so many of Johnson's projects so far. Number six, Cocaine Bear. It's it's called Cocaine Bear. What more could you possibly want to know? Seriously though, I'm, I'm not making this up. This is the exact title for Elizabeth Banks' new thriller movie, which is being produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. The script is based on a stranger than fiction true story, which unfolded in Kentucky in 1985, where a black bear unknowingly ingested massive amounts of cocaine that it found in an abandoned duffel bag. The bear reportedly died 20 minutes into the sesh though, so don't expect it to embark at any kind of coke fueled rampage across the city or anything like that. Instead, you can assume that the film is going to focus more on how the duffel bag ended up where it was, which is surprisingly equally as mad. That's because it actually ended up there because it was thrown out of a plane by smuggler Andrew Thornton, who then planned to jump down and parachute on it, but unfortunately on the way down his parachute didn't activate and he ended up falling to his death. I told ya, mad. This thing is going to make headlines on its name alone, but it sounds like there is a genuinely juicy story there to support a really interesting and really thrilling film. Number five, We Own This City. The Wires co-creator David Simon is currently prepping his next project for HBO. This will be an adaptation of investigative journalist Justin Fenton's recently released book, We Own The City, a true story of crime cops and corruption. Simon will team with his regular collaborator George Pelicanos to write this Baltimore-centric miniseries. However, despite its setting and counting numerous writers of The Wire on its own writing staff, this will be in no way a direct spin-off or anything like that to The Wire itself. Fenton's book is set in 2015 and covers the Baltimore protests and riots following the death of 25-year-old black man Freddie Gray in police custody. It'll also look into the fallout and the corruption in the Baltimore Police Department itself. Given Simon's meticulous journalistic eye for detail, there's no reason to expect anything less than brilliance from this one. And following last year's Black Lives Matter protests, it couldn't be more timely. Number four, Ghost of Tsushima. Last year's samurai-themed video game Ghost of Tsushima went on to be the PS4's fastest-selling original exclusive title in history, selling over 6.5 million copies at the time of recording. And so it's little surprise that such a commercially successful new IP, and one that is inherently cinematic at that, has been lined up by Hollywood to get the big screen adaptation treatment. This was recently confirmed with John Wick trilogy director Chad Staleski being also brought on as the director of this movie. The game casts the player as samurai Jin Sakai, who is defending Tsushima Island from the incoming Mongol invasion. It will mark the second collaboration between Sony Pictures and PlayStation Productions as well, the first being the upcoming Tom Holland starring Uncharted movie. With developers Sucker Punch on board as executive producers as well, this theoretically should come across as a more cohesive and considered adaptation rather than the usual video game fare we get. Theoretically, anyway. Number three, City Primeval. It seems that Deadwood the movie won't be the only Western themed revival that Timothy Oliphant will be starring in. And that's because his hit series Justified is set to get the sequel spin off treatment based on the 1980 novel City Primeval High Noon in Detroit. The novel is centered around a Detroit homicide detective called Raymond Cruz, who's trying to get to the bottom of the murder of a corrupt city judge. Though this original story doesn't actually feature Oliphant's character from the series Justified, word on the street, and by street I mean variety, has indicated that Oliphant will be back and his character will be implemented in the story somehow. Whether that's a lead role or a supporting role, we're still yet to be sure. Still, all of the principal creatives, including Justified creator Graham Yost, are back, so we have high hopes for this spin-off. Number two, Sand Kings. 
It may feel like George R. R. Martin has more projects up in the air than even he can keep count of, but one of the most exciting ones recently announced is an adaptation of his 1979 novelette, Sand Kings. The 23-page Hugo Award-winning work is set in the Thousand Worlds universe that so many other George R. R. Martin stories are set in. It follows a wealthy playboy named Simon Cress who, on the planet Boulder, gets more than he bargained for when he buys some of the titular creatures. Sun Kings has previously been adapted in a 1995 episode of The Outer Limits, but this new project is going to be a Netflix film helmed by Gore Verbinski. Netflix usually lets their creatives just run mad with whatever they're doing, so let's hope Verbinski can really harness the insanity of the source material and bring it to life in an epic visual way. Number one, expiration date. One of the most attention-grabbing and unavoidably controversial projects announced in March was Expiration Date. This is a new drama series starring Will Forte as Robin, a grief-stricken man who takes out an insurance policy on his life, with the provision that he doesn't commit suicide inside of one year. The show will be focused on the suicidally despondent Robin, who is essentially just counting down the days until this policy runs out so he can end his own life. Unsurprisingly, the show's premise took a lot of flack in the public eye, with a bunch of suicide prevention groups calling the project wildly irresponsible. And you can kind of see where they're coming from, especially as it's being conceived in a time where mental health across the entire globe is at an all-time low. Nevertheless, tone and execution are incredibly important when it comes to a piece of work like this, and you have to assume that ultimately this will be a life-affirming message where the character learns and develops and ultimately moves away from his suicidal tendencies. It is going to be controversial, no doubt, but Will Forte has put in excellent performances over the past few years, and hopefully the quality behind and in front of the camera can treat this dense and difficult subject matter with the respect it deserves. So that's our list. I want to know you guys think down in the comments below. Which of these upcoming movie and TV projects are you the most excited for? And did I miss any off here that you think deserved to be included? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.